Hi, I'm Steven, and this is my pancake recipe. Hi, I'm Beth, and this is the Domino family pancake recipe. Hi, I'm Penny, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. I came up with this because I got tired of the monotony of regular pancakes, and I really wanted to shake it up. My children loved pancakes when they were growing up. We make them all the time. This is my pancake recipe that I make on any Sunday morning that my husband is willing to do the dishes. We have our pancake mix already prepared in this bowl. I start with the flour. Obviously there's flour here. So that's a little bit of whole wheat flour. I replace some of the all-purpose flour with. And then of course there's a little bit of sugar, sugar. Cause you gotta have sugar. Gotta have sugar. Two whole brown eggs. There's a lot of shells in there. And then we have our chemical leaveners. We have baking powder and baking soda. To help them rise. Cut about half of the cheesecake. Ooh. This is breaking up the monotony. There we go. And then you just wanna kinda break it up. Oh geez, this is more of an arm workout than I would like. I always start with a cup of milk. And then we'll follow up with our buttermilk. And this is some graham cracker sprinkles. It added a little je ne sais quoi. Don't know what that means though. This is the important part. Don't over mix it. I don't want to over mix this. And you want to make sure that you mix it thoroughly. That's it, that's the batter. Now we're going to cook the pancakes. All right, so now on to the fun bacon part. This is where the magic is really happening in this recipe. I'm going to take the bacon and we're going to chop it into small pieces. And just one down through the center for good measure. And what I like to do to grease the pan is to use some vegetable oil on a piece of paper towel or a kitchen towel. I like the way the oil works better with the pancakes than the butter. You want to take a good chunk of butter. So I don't really need to over grease this, but I'm going to make sure that the pancake doesn't stick. Before I make the pancakes, I always like to do a tester pancake to make sure that the pan is hot and the consistency of the batter is exactly where I want it. My skillet's nice and hot. It's preheated to a good medium, medium high temperature. And I'll pour my batter into the center. So this is the first pancake. The first pancake is not usually your best pancake. Most often it ends up actually in the garbage. Some say the first pancake never comes out perfect. I go against some. And now we wait. Waiting for pancakes is one of the hardest things you can do in the world. Two, two. That's a nice color on both sides. But this is just <laughs> so rule of thumb, we always try to throw away the first pancake. It's burnt, if we're going to be honest. It's burnt. All right, wish me luck. Ah! It's a mess. Told you the first one. Now that our testing pancake came out great, let's make four more. Now we're going to go in for round two. Put some blueberries on. Candied bacon. I like a piece of bacon in every fork full of pancake. I think I'm romanticizing. Now we wait for the bubbles. But it's still not ready. Mother's intuition. You know when to flip the pancakes when you see lots of bubbles on top and the bubbles start to pop. Bubbles are already starting to release. I'm supposed to flip it four times, about twice on each side. I only like to turn my pancakes once. It's gonna do what it does. There we have a beautiful blueberry pancake. Nice lift when I turned it. Thank you, baking powder. So you have the bubbles on the first side that tell you when to flip, but you don't have that kind of benefit on the second side. So any place that little bit of batter escaped when I flipped it, that's kind of my guide. Once I see that look more dry, then I know maybe I'm okay. Now we're gonna make our toppings. Always start with some nice butter. butter that will melt on our warm pancakes. So the brown butter that was in the pancake recipe, we only used three tablespoons of that, but I went ahead and made the entire pound of butter brown butter, because why not? We're gonna chop the strawberries, pour the strawberry syrup on top of the strawberries. First, we'll put the maple syrup so that the blueberries will stick to the syrup. Nobody likes maple syrup. We're gonna start with a bourbon maple syrup. 
We're gonna take a vanilla bean, split that down the center, and scrape down the pod with the back of a paring knife. I'm gonna scrape that into there and add the bean as well. A pinch of salt, bourbon, lots of it. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. The easiest way to get it to a consistent simmer is to first bring it up to a boil, and then as soon as it hits a boil, turn it down, and we're gonna let that hang out for about 10 to 15 minutes so that all the flavors blend together. Our blueberries, and a final flourish of a little lemon zest. Then you take the syrup and lather it on. You can even pour it. Ooh, that looks good. And I'm gonna drizzle it over the top of my pancakes. And no joke, I'm also gonna put it in a small pitcher and serve it alongside because the amount of syrup on the top is never enough. So I really like a little bit of a fruity element with my pancakes, and so I made an apple butter. Apple butter is like applesauce, but it's cooked way longer and very rich, and a lot of the moisture has been cooked out. So I like to just serve this alongside my pancakes and dip in as I go. Let's dig in. My husband's gonna be so jealous that I ate these today. <laughs> these are my pancakes. I see where I messed mm. up, but it's really good. Oh my god, they're good. so good. The dry ingredients in pancake mix are flour, salt, sugar, and leaveners. Stephen bought that mix. This is in fact store-bought pancake mix. And Beth made that mix. They're essentially the same thing. And it's a lot less expensive. Quick breads like pancakes are leavened with chemical leaveners, either baking powder or baking soda. Stephen and Beth both used baking powder in their pancake batter. Mother's intuition. Baking powder is a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, which is basic or alkaline, and a mixture of acids. The mixture of an acidic compound and a basic compound will come together and produce carbon dioxide gas in our batter and make it rise or lift when it's baking. Thank you, baking powder. Penny's pancake batter has baking soda and baking powder. Baking soda, when combined with an acidic component like the buttermilk in her batter, will help to produce more carbon dioxide bubbles than our level one and level two chefs, creating a product that will rise even more. Those are the Kohar facts. This is also gonna produce an even browner final product. Color's good, it's nice and brown, a little bit caramelized on the top. Because the Maillard reaction, or the combination of a reducing sugar and the amino acids found in the batter, are favorable in a basic environment. So that's that. Each of our chefs use a different kind of dairy product in their pancake batter. Beth used whole milk. I always start with a cup of milk. And Penny used buttermilk. Buttermilk, brown butter, two of the secrets in the liquid ingredients. Buttermilk is more acidic than whole milk and will provide a deeper flavor than the whole milk. Anywhere that I can add things to make it more interesting, I like to try to do that. Steven used cheesecake in his batter, which will make it resemble more of a cake than a pancake. It will be less fluffy and have a tighter crumb. It doesn't look good. Penny's dry mix looks similar to Steven's and Beth's mix, but she added whole wheat flour to create a complex flavor in her final pancake. I am not trying to be healthy, no joke. Steven vigorously stirred his pancake batter. More of an arm workout than I would like. Beth and Penny both stirred their pancake batter just until the dry ingredients were wet and dampened. But if it's smooth and not lumpy, it won't be right, it just won't. Over stirring produces gluten strands that tunnel through the pancake batter. This will produce a chewy and elastic product as opposed to a fluffy pancake. Cooking a pancake over a moderate or medium heat will ensure that the browning happens on the outside of the pancake at the same rate that the inside cooks. I don't, I don't really like it mushy in the middle. As soon as bubbles start to form on the top of the pancake, it's ready to flip. Bubble action. This shows that the carbon dioxide is giving leavening or rise to the pancake and it's ready to turn over to the other side. Steven flipped his pancake before we saw the carbon dioxide bubbles break the surface of his pancake. 
This is because he stirred the mixture vigorously and removed a lot of that leavening power from the baking powder. And he used heavy and dense ingredients like cheesecake that is gonna weigh down his product. I thought I was ready for level two, but I think I'm right where I belong. People often use the first pancake as a test to see if the heat is at the right temperature in their pan. A good example of this is Steven's first pancake. The bottom got a little bit too brown before the middle could cook. It's burnt, if we're gonna be honest. He then adjusted his heat to make sure that the next pancakes were cooked evenly. After being flipped once, the pancakes will start to rise again. If you continue to flip the pancakes back and forth, you're gonna push out all of the carbon dioxide built up in the pancake, and it won't be as fluffy. You don't make these pancakes like I do. You're just a scientist. One flip is ideal for making pancakes. Multiple flips will create a flatter pancake by taking out some of the carbon dioxide in the batter. Steven didn't mix anything into his pancakes. Beth used blueberries in her mix, and Penny used candied bacon. Oh, the smell is incredible. When adding something into the pancake mix, the lower the sugar content, the less likely it's going to burn. Blueberries are a good option in pancake mix because when exposed to direct heat, they won't burn as quickly as a higher sugar product. You can't have too many blueberries on blueberry pancakes. High sugar mix-ins, like Penny's candied bacon, can burn at a faster rate than the pancakes cook. Sprinkle the remaining candied bacon over the top of this baby. It is advisable to have a high level of expertise when adding high sugar products into your pancake mix. This will help to avoid burning. Each chef chose a thoughtful array of toppings to pair with their pancakes. Steven paired his pancakes with fresh cut strawberries and strawberry syrup. Ooh, that looks good. Beth paired her pancakes with maple syrup, blueberries, and butter with a little bit of lemon zest to help brighten the overall flavor. That's wonderful. Penny added apple butter, bourbon maple syrup, spiced brown butter, and candied bacon to her pancakes. Everybody has their own individual way of topping a pancake. You can layer on similar flavors or combine different tastes, flavors, and textures to create an overall more unique sensory profile. The next time you're flipping out on Sunday morning, take some of the tips from this video to make your next pancakes.